so the majority of my career would be in uh, hedge funds. Uh, prior to that, I was on the sell side, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, got a great opportunity to jump onto the buy side uh, way back in the 90s for what I consider to be the best hedge fund, uh, at least at the time, Tiger Management. So I felt very fortunate to be there. I ran operations for them. I was there eight years. I ran global operations for Highbridge Capital. And I've also been in the COO and CCO seats of uh, a couple of smaller managers, not nearly the size of of a tiger or hybrid. So it's been predominantly, uh, you know, on the upside. And um, the interesting part about tiger really kind of shaped my career because, you know, we were charged with putting together a, a support team to support a hedge fund and, and probably one of the biggest ones out there at the time. And there was no precedent set. You know, most of the people that, that, that were involved were from the sell side. And it's very different when you go to, you know, for a hedge fund specifically. I mean, they're used to, you know, hedge funds originated from, uh, you know, basically trading U.S. equities, which would be supported by your prime broker. Pretty easy stuff to do. But when they started to get more sophisticated and now trading in foreign markets and now trading all different types of derivatives, uh, to swaps and swaptions, there's no prime broker or investment uh, or custodian bank that's going to really provide that support for the hedge fund. So uh, the, the point being, we, we we were taught early on how to be sort of uh, innovative, think out of the box. What is the, you know, let's dumb it down. What are we really trying to accomplish? And we basically built procedures and policies uh, to support that that are, that are still used uh, today. Um, so, um, you know, uh, different positions during my career, but uh, the part that brought me to um, thinking about OpsCheck was specifically when I was at Highbridge. Highbridge Capital was just purchased by JP Morgan. So having that vast distribution network around the world, their, their AUM of 8 billion when I walked in the door um, skyrocketed to over 30 billion within two years. I'd like to think it was because of me, but of course it wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, so it was a challenge. I had people in Hong Kong, London, uh, New York. Uh, the team built up to oh, over 50 people at some point. And I went to the CTO. I said, there's so much going on. Is there anything out there that can really help us, you know, me and my direct reports wrap their arms around everything that needs to get done so we can really keep track as we're creating new, new procedures, hiring new people, people leaving, training and all that. And yeah, the short answer was no. So... Um, you know, we kind of jury rigged ways ways to do it. Uh, and then fast forward, um, you know, I was at now the COO of a global macro fund, much smaller, much smaller team. And I realized that the challenges were similar. Even though I didn't have 50 people to keep an eye on, I had uh, four people that had to wear different hats during the day. So the, the idea just kept, you know, staying with me and building. And then finally, when uh, that hedge fund unfortunately had to close down, I went out and pursued this idea.